Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. Standing by to call the action here on Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaughton, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They've been buoyed by getting two home games right at the start, and they come off a good victory in week one. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they come off a good win in the opener on the road, and they get a second road game here. Yeah, the schedule makers didn't really do them any favors, but if they can win here and get to 2-0 on the road, they could be well set up for the rest of the year. Two teams here, each off to 1-0 and starts as this one is underway on EA Sports. This will be fielded at the 8. And good starting field position. They'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their 6'5 quarterback out of North Dakota State. It's Carson Wentz. He didn't have as many throws or plays in college as many of the quarterbacks that were coming out in the draft, but he maximized what he had. Ended up winning two national championships as a starting quarterback at North Dakota State. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Here's the offense, and sometimes you got to show love to the big guys. That you do. We're talking about Jason Kelsey now, not Travis, his brother who plays tight end. Jason lines up at center, a threat to go to the Pro Bowl each and every year. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Now wins. An interception made by Marshall and Jeffrey. The numbers for Jeffrey from last week. Comfortably up over 100 yards when cruising past that number and two touchdowns. How'd you like to be the D coordinator this week? He watched that game last week, and I know his first thought was we have to find a way to take him out of the game plan. We cannot let him do that to us. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Play fake to Sanders. Now here's Wentz. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Gatter. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants 33. To throw for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So they come up first and 10 now from the 33. Watch the run, watch the run. Wentz on the give to Sanders. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And the defense for New York. Leonard Wentz is one of the top draft picks coming out of USC. He's done nothing to diminish the comparisons people make of past greats. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Hey, come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. A gain of five. 
good enough for the first down. On first and ten, here's Reds. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdog, so you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams then they come in bunches. Now Wentz on third down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacks back at the 31. Kyler Fackrell coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays and give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. Yeah, you know, he hated taking the loss there on third down. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like, whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone here for a touchback. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. At a glance at the man under center at 6'5", he always demands attention. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you, you know? At the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy springs for the good stuff. Here's the offense, and we give you too much power here. We let you highlight the player. Why would you choose Zeitler? Because I think the big guys up front never Come get on, enough set. credit. Kevin Zeitler, a guard, tough, on, nasty. We've got to give him some love. <laughs> From the 29, Jones. He's got his man. This is Tate. That catch good for five. It's third down. Both now with the defensive starters for Philadelphia. They were very good in the victory a week ago over Cincinnati. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers down ready, ready. That's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. Jones, and Ingram holds it in, and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want to feel like it's the end of the world, either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down. Help them relax a little bit. Now, Saquon Barkley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Jones throw on target to Shepard. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So if they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on him, not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second down. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let us face that's going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. Now after the play, oh man, it's Barkley who appears to be shaken up. He's down. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break.
So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. That goes for 15 yards on the fake, a first down. And a lot of fist bumps right now on that sideline. And they were right in that gray area on the edge of long field goal range, maybe too short to punt it. So the defense probably was expecting this was a possibility. They should have been. And in most cases, what you do on defense is you go to what they call punt safe. In other words, you leave your defense on the field to prepare for them to possibly go for it. And then you just have a little bit different response. You're not really trying to get a big return. You just want to make sure you get the ball back. But they fell asleep with the switch. They rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong. But now it's second and 12. Now Jones. They're going to Gallman here on the screen. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. 18, Gator. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Rush coming, and he's taken down. We caught that sack block. Whenever you see a team deciding to throw the ball on third and one, as a defensive player, my mindset is we've got them now, and that's why they dialed up the blitz and got after them. But occasionally, you want to pass it on third and one. I mean, not a lot, for sure, but sometimes just to keep the defense guessing. Oh, no doubt. You want to break tendencies as you go along with the game because you don't want them to just say, oh, third and one, we know exactly what they're going to do. But in this situation, as an offensive lineman, as a running back, I want to know why I didn't get the football. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. This one taken just inside the 10. Did a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. But you met fan bases that was a bit. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick. Other than the extra point, that's it. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. On second down, it's Sanders. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Third down. From the gun on third down, wins. Not open, it's good one. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from the street safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say, I do like the call. I like what they were trying. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. A big breakdown defensively there on the fake punt. Turns into a huge play and a first down. Meanwhile, down in Dallas, an update from there. And the Steelers there out to an early lead. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. So the drive takes him in the Giants' territory now. First and 10, right at the 40. Here's Wentz to throw. And he'll hit Jeffrey for three. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A big pickup there for the Eagles first down, 18 yards. <laughs> On first down, Sanders. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. <laughs> Looking to throw on second down. Wentz. That's caught by Jackson. And he'll take this forward for two, maybe three. Holding offense. But we do have a flag down, and they're already marching backward. 
Umpire threw the flag. Still Usually this indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities. But always, always making sure no one's holding. This pass complete wins to Ertz. Call it a three-yard game. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Seventh play in this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. These two teams are all tied after one. Here we go, here we go. Seventh play in this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Wentz going to throw. And he's going to be taken down. Back around the 35-yard line. Dexter Lawrence in there to drop it for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. That's exactly what happened on that play. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. You know, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's, that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of legs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Gorman. Jalen Mills in on the stop. He went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. The previous carry looked pretty good. And that one, he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Let's go, defense. Our top is our top. Show it up. <laughs> From the 36, Jones will complete this to Ingram is tied in. And he'll go down at the 28. That one a first down pickup of eight. Push it back. Push it back. On first down, Jones. That's complete to Goldman. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a game of 11 and a giant first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back is usually a good spot to go to the football. Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. Last stop! I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not everyone's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. And Tate's got it! And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline. But what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed through the blocker and picked up the first down. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to the two. From the two now, second and goal. Second and two. Yeah. 
The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they tell their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. There he goes outside. Second touchdown on the season. As they are an extra point away now from timeless football game. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals, all have those types of thoughts. And then you just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. All level now at ten apiece as the kicks away. This fielded at the two. Turn here, he gets it out to the 25 yard line. The New York set to take the field. We have his touchdowns on back to back drives to see if the offense can continue this uptick here. And I know you're looking at me funny. You're wondering when I'm going to get upset watching these guys go up and down field, aren't you? I wasn't looking at you. I got something in my eye. That's the excuse that you always use for something like that. Listen, I appreciate you doing the offensive football as much as the next person. When his player played well and is skillful, I'm with it. And right now, this is exciting. Well, the defender likes it. Well, first down there on a pick up the 25. Let's go! Pardon if you want more kills. I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Here's Gallman. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk about football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing ball down is success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. From the 40 now on second down, Jones finds his tight end, Ingram. They give him a gain of 38. Keep playing. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Pushes forward from maybe 40 down to the six-yard line. 
The Giants on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Jones from the down, he'll throw. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall on coverage. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground. Now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And Rosas puts this one through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Get ready! Get ready! Get ready! the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go up and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things up. A good game there on first down. That run will get him seven up to the 32-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That one point from the 32-yard line here, second and three. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They don't need to run another play here before the two in the morning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now a carry for Sanders. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Keep playing hard, fellas. All day. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up at halftime. We'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week of the regular season. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And give him nine yards on the second down screen play. For a second, he thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. He still ended up with a solid game. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want. But in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. We did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Now Jones, throwing again on second and ten. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Jones now to throw on third down. And now another one thrown incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there was a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. 62 yards on the punt that time. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Wentz now on first down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he'll get this up to the 34 yard line. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. 
to throw. It's Reigns. That's complete to a speedy wide on Goodwin. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Back to back, good plays have them on the move on first down. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. Throwing now is Wins. And they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Play three in the drive now is successful. They go backwards after those two first down games. They'll let this go for the end zone. And he backs it away. It falls down incomplete. Jabril Peppers, the former first round pick there on the coverage. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Wentz, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening week hit. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll start with one of the classic matchups in the NFL. A lot of pageantry between these two teams. Pittsburgh heading down to take on Dallas. And it's the Steelers who are out in front. James Washington. A touchdown reception. From there, we'll head to Cleveland to check on the Browns at home at First Energy Stadium. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Baker Mayfield with a couple of touchdown passes. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And they have the lead over the visiting Washington Redskins. The Panthers locked in a tight one, but this is a game you feel they've got to have. In our game, we were treated to a strong first half from the former Blue Devil, Daniel Jones. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game, as we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Second half ready to get rolling. The Giants with a lead, and they are set to receive this kick. This one taken from the seventh. Yeah, nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Let's go, let's go. So now the Giants set to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now in this ball game, and they got the victory last week against the Rams. So some good momentum as they come up first and 10. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. They'll run again here with Garma. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. So many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. It's caught, Shepard. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard game. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Here's Jones. Off the play fake. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And hear the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. And they occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation allows him to get home. that sack Ready. it's second and 21 Shoot. it's hauled in by Shepard 
That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. You want the front the stats that matter on this play. Don't help the team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. Yeah, if you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah, no yardage. Good job on the defense, though. They, they went through the... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Derek Barnett able to maneuver over for the sack. That's be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum, because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. Here's Jackson to return. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. A quick throw there out to Jeffrey. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Brings up second and nine. Hey, Mike, 20, Mike. <laughs> on second and nine. Rents. Look at this tight end on the corner. It's complete. And past the 30. Before he's up the bounds. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. They'll run on first down. It's Sanders. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. The throw by Wentz, caught by Jackson. And he's brought down the line before reaching the third. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 30. Okay, what can't Michelle Jackson do? Uh, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game. And he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders. And Deshaun Jackson made that big time return all the way back for a game winner. And that one, I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants sideline. On first down, Sanders. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he can even get started. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out. Maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. Get him. And looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Shotgun now for Lance. And Jeffrey's got it. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle but couldn't spring himself free. It would be a very makeable field goal try from here, but instead they're going to go for it. It's a sneak. It's Wentz. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. Now this time, Wentz will throw. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just like every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. They five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Runs. Open space inside the 10. And that's complete to Jeffrey. And finally down at the nine-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position.
Make sure you do it in something right. Just remember that. Oh, every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails? Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, playing here for a touchdown. Elliott on for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. For the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. Ready? Now Jones. And this is Shepard on the catch. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Right there. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. From the gun on third down, Jones. And Ingram has it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Spike. Throwing Jones. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And that will bring second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Goldman will run it. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. And a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy can hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to go into the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Now on fourth down, they throw the deep ball, but it lines up to be incomplete. The Giants go on fourth, but come up empty. And the Eagles defense able to hold. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jumping. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. Play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a third down. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Eight yards, first down as they're able to convert. Good work. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after.
after this, this is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Play fake to Sanders. Now here's Wentz. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Jabril Peppers, the former first-round pick, there on the coverage. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Here's Sanders. And they'll bring this one inside the 45. And he's going to get this pretty close to the first down marker at the Giants 34. The Eagles on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and two. To throw his wins. And that is incomplete. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. This was still going to be one score game either way, but still, that's a potentially harmful miss here in the fourth. It certainly is, because if you consider that now if they give up the touchdown, they give up the lead. So he might be getting the side eye by the defenders coming out on the field now as he goes back to the bench after that miss. Yeah, first play of the drive there is incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Jones. Throw the out route. Complete. That's Shepard. First down, Giants on a pick of the 13. So signs of life in Rex been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. He's going to float this one deep right side. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. That one good for 37 yards. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown. That gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Now we've got a giant player here slow to get up after that last play. Now he gets attended to. Let's step aside. In the backfield by himself is Brown. Second and goal. Second and three. And to the sack. Sack back at the nine yard line. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, gave the sack. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Looking to throw. Jones. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Let's go, let's go. And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal, a sack on third and goal. Now brings up a decision on fourth down. Rosas' kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I felt there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. That's it, baby. We got one. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stick. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by the former first round pick, DJ Hayden. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Go. got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Jones on first and ten. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he is tackled Let's inside go, the 40, go. not quite to the 35. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal. No way to escape, and he goes down. 
defensively. They're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Now in third and long, they'll look to throw. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16, but they remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. Boy, they have a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And last time, one play interception, so this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of covering it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play call because a one play drive and a throw interception. A lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Well, part, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Wentz on the draw leaves it for Sanders. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right in a yard. Despite the blitz, he's still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and makes creases like they were able to exploit right there. And this time not quite to the 30 will be down. Offense. And those linemen, of course, can't be more than a yard downfield when a pass is thrown, and they might have been able to call that on a couple of guys there. Hey, Mike 20, Mike. Wins to throw on second down. Caught by the tight end Roots. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Philadelphia picking up the first down a gain of 15. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players. Right? I mean, they about six, four, six, five and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. From the 17, wins. Jackson. Seven yards on the pickup there. Play, now you got it first Let's and goal. Go. A little football 101 there. He just see the receiver trying to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him. And now he's trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Second down and goal. Wentz. It's caught by Sanders. No gain there, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one for the third. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back with. And he's going to be dropped. Back of the 15-yard line. Oh, Shane Zeminis. Drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. 
So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players. Now a hit and a loose football. And nothing but green grass here. No across the 25, a couple of extra Keep yards up to the 27 yard line. And now out Ready? come the Giants. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the draw. They'll take it. Just all oh, dude. He's got a man complete. The 20. Touchdown, Giants. Darius Slayton, his second touchdown of the afternoon. As they now sit just a two-point conversion away from tying this game up in the fourth quarter. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more. Reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. A well, big play looking for the Giants as they'll go for two. Now Jones operating from the down. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right call. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. And he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. Right here, right here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Ball. Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points to three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Back to throw, wins. And this is going to be incomplete. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. That fourth quarter, maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. 47-yard punt, a return of four. And it'll be Giant football first and ten. So now Jones and the Giants down by two. A minute 37 remaining. And they need about 35 yards to get in range for a winner as they come up on first down. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Back to throw. Now the Giants 
also use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. They'll look to throw. Oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Trevor Williams with a pin. And he returns it into enemy territory down the 45 yard line. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, oh, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put it into this thing. They'll go again with Sanders. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. He's going to float this one deep right side. This is caught. So Fly Eagles fly. It's a victory for Philadelphia. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? Those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So for the Eagles, they used the...